Hello, everybody. Welcome back to day two at Event Tech Live US and Canada. This is session one on the smart stage today. And we have Josh King, sales and marketing director at EMC3 joining us. Josh, welcome to the session. Hey, Adam. How have you been? Um, uh, apart from a bit of man flu, I'm not going to lie, but I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm all good. Thank you very much for asking. How are you? Yeah, very well, very well, very busy at the moment, but that's a really great place to be in, you know? Awesome. So your session is titled How to Create Impactful and Engaging Hybrid Experience. I know this is a hot topic, so I'll give you the floor and look forward to hearing your presentation, mate. Amazing. Thanks very much, Adam. So yes, my name is Josh King and I am the Sales and Marketing Director for EMC3. We're one of the world's leading creative agencies who specialize in virtual, hybrid, and in-person events. Over the last two decades, we've helped some of the world's leading brands, including LinkedIn, HubSpot, and Drift, drive sales, brand awareness, and growth through the in-person events and digital experiences that we create. Now, I'm so excited to be here today talking about how to create impactful and engaging hybrid experiences. Now, our first hybrid event was actually back in 2014 for a brand called ACI. And over the last 18 months, we've produced over 70 virtual events. So this is a space that we've been immersed in for a very long time. Now I want to open today's session by telling you a little story. I've worked for EMC3 now for over seven years, during which time we've produced events ranging in size from 20 to 24,000 attendees. We've worked on events in London and Los Angeles, from Mumbai to Dubai, and it's been a roller coaster of a ride. We've partnered with some of the world's most incredible speakers, including Michelle Obama, George Clooney, Serena Williams, and Trevor Noah. It's been absolutely incredible. But one event sticks out in my mind more so than any of the others. We just wrapped up a three day event for one of the world's leading tech brands. The feedback on side from the head client was absolutely incredible. So as the debrief came around, as you expect, we, we had feelings of elation. We we're really excited to see what the rest of the team felt about the event. And mostly the feedback was incredible. However, to our dismay, the feedback from one of the key stakeholders was rather stale. Now it was from that moment that we understood that our process had to change. And it was from that, that the unique methodology that I'm going to share with you today was born. But before that, I want to jump right in and show you some of our events just to give some context to our conversation today. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of context into who EMC3 are and the kinds of support that we provide. So without further ado, let's jump right into what we're going to cover today. So firstly, we're going to look at what a hybrid event is and what 
a virtual event is and the key differentiators between the two. We're then going to look at how to create impactful and engaging hybrid experiences and the process that we follow to ensure that the experiences that we create are as impactful as possible. And then finally, we're gonna jump into a deep dive of hybrid events and breaking down the key components that go into creating an engaging hybrid experience. Now, I generally cover this for about 45 minutes because there's so much incredible content around this topic. Now, I do want to leave some time for some Q&A at the end as well. So I'm gonna try go through it as quickly as possible. But if you would like to jump in and talk about this in more detail, I'd love to connect on LinkedIn. So first things first, here are two of my favorite definitions of what a virtual event is and what a hybrid event is. So essentially, a virtual event allows a dispersed online audience with shared interests to share, to engage in a common experience. Now, the key differentiator with a hybrid event is that you have an online audience participating and an in-person audience participating. So you have these two parallel attendee journeys, essentially, which at key touch points will be able to interact and engage with one another. Now, whenever we're producing an interactive and engaging virtual event or hybrid experience, we like to follow a similar process, which we like to call the seven P's of digital planning, because we all love a bit of alliteration at the end of the day, right? So the first thing that we look at when we start a new project is the purpose behind the event. We like to gather key stakeholders from the brands that we're working with and ask them, why are we running this event? Is it to drive brand awareness? Is it to drive sales? Is it for training purposes? Is it to launch a new product? It's crucial to have a clear vision in place at the start of any project. From there, we like to ask, what are we trying to achieve? And then outline some clear goals and objectives and some KPIs for the event. Too often when we interact with brands, for one event or one marketing campaign, they have a list of 100 different objectives. Now, if your goals are too diffuse and you're trying to achieve everything at once, ultimately, you end up achieving nothing what's at all. So it's important to have that clarity of vision from the outset. We also like to involve sales teams with the marketing teams who are planning the event. Too often when we engage with brands, there's a significant disconnect between sales and marketing. Now, if you don't have alignment between your sales team and your marketing team, you're never going to experience the levels of ROI that you, that you want to from your events and your marketing campaigns. So gathering key stakeholders from all of the departments within your business and listening to them and allowing them to feedback, not necessarily drive, but feedback and be involved in the conversation around your event is such a valuable tool. And that way, as a holistic body, the rest of the business will feel motivated and passionate about your marketing campaigns and your events, and you will see your return on investment go through the roof. Now, once you've started to, to develop the clear purpose behind your event, that serves as the driver for all of the narrative. You start building your agenda for the event, and that's tied through all of the, everything from your agenda to all of your pre-event comps. So once you've outlined a clear mission and vision, then you can start evolving and really focusing on the positioning of the event. There's so much webinar white noise out there at the moment. Everyone's running an event. So everyone's running webinars, everyone's running virtual events, and now everyone's gravitating towards the new buzzword, hybrid events. So that means that there's a lot of competition for people's attention. So you have to be very, very clever with how you market, market to your event. One of the key things that we tell our partners to do is listen to your audience. So if you have feedback from previous events, brilliant, really immerse yourselves in that data and use that to craft your strategy. And if you don't, consider sending out surveys to your target audience and spend a lot of time researching what people actually want out of an event. We always like to focus on solving, not selling. 
That's a crucial component. And then consider how does your event differ from others on the market? How many events have you been to where it's the same speakers, they're called the same things, they have the same sessions? Be bold, be original, and you will see the returns. So once you focused on developing a strong positioning, then use that to really evolve a great, strong, powerful event brand. Build out your event brand guidelines. And from that, you can start again, building out a narrative which has your clear mission and vision tied in throughout. So the next thing that we look at is we go to, we look at the people. So who is actually going to deliver your experience? Now, one of the trends that we saw with virtual events was there was a mass exodus of talent from the industry. There was a huge culling of so many incredible marketing and events professionals that brands everywhere were significantly underserving the number of people it took to deliver an immersive and engaging virtual event. Now, realistically, with a hybrid event, it takes more technological expertise, more logistical expertise, and more planning. So it's crucial that you partner with people who have experience delivering hybrid events. Some of the brands that we're interacting with now are considering having one team for the virtual component and one team for the in-person component. Now, what that lead can lead to is a real disconnect in, in the experience. So partnering with a full service agency who has experience in this space is crucial. If you want your experience to be as good as possible, it's crucial that you have the right team in place. So what we've done here is outline a few of the key positions that are required when producing a fantastic digital experience. The next thing we look at is the platform. Now, it's crucial to remember that what have been the best platforms in terms of virtual events may not be the best platforms for hybrid events. So you have to ask yourself, what is the best delivery mechanism for your event and for your audience? Whenever you're creating an experience, allow it to be audience driven. What's going to resonate most with them? You always have to plan around what's, you know, with audience in mind first. Now, we've always recommended gravitating away from platforms such as Zoom and Teams. There's a real sense of fatigue that has started to set in. You know, you and I at home, it's we've all been on hundreds of Zoom calls every week or hundreds of uh, Teams meetings every week. So it's important when you're trying to alleviate things like fatigue, that you're moving onto platforms that are far more immersive and engaging. It's one of the crucial steps. So some of the partners that we've been working with are people like Hopin, Hubelo, uh, Bevy and Goldcast. And what they're looking at now is evolving their platforms from what have been fantastic virtual platforms to really accommodate for a hybrid audience. That they, they're also so many more requirements from the platforms, whether that be on-site check-in, uh, the pre-event and post-event emails become even more important than ever before at that point. So there's so many components that you have to consider. So once you've, once you've thought about the purpose behind your event, the positioning and the, the team that are actually going to deliver the experience uh, and the platform, the delivery mechanism, then, then the fun part really starts. You can start promoting the event. Now, Lots of people have simply not been giving themselves enough lead time. Before uh, this session started today, we've actually had a, a hybrid event inquiry for an event which is next week. So people aren't giving themselves enough time to promote these events. It's, you know, it's, it's crucial to give yourself enough time to build that sense of FOMO, create that PR buzz and have some fun with it, you know? Uh, and again, it all starts from having that clear mission and vision in place building out a detailed critical path from the outset of the project, um, and then tying that narrative into everything, your HTML emails, any of the pre-event videos. And again, you can really create a sense of FOMO. The next thing you look at is the production. Now, consumers' expectations have all increased significantly. We're all used to things like Amazon Prime and Netflix being readily available at our fingertips. So it's crucial that you invest in your production. Invest in speed 
LinkedIn. Uh, and ask yourself, how can you ensure that you think of your event as, as a production? And ask yourself, how can it run as seamlessly as possible? So rehearsals are going to be key at that point. Absolutely crucial. And the next part, and the final chapter that we look at in what is very much a cyclical process is the post event engagement cycle. It's too often ignored by people. Often an event comes to a close and the client just moves on. It's crucial that there is a continuation of the narrative after the event comes to a close. It's also vital to start thinking about immersing yourselves in the rich data that you've captured during that event and then helping that drive your future event marketing strategy. So understanding what sessions worked, what didn't, which speakers resonated, what topics they would like to hear about in the future is absolutely crucial to being successful. So now we're going to look in a bit more detail at what a hybrid event is. So by definition, it's a physical meeting in which an online audience also participates. Essentially, both the physical as well as the online audience come together and participate in the experience at the same time from different locations. And as you can see, an abundance of event planners right now feel that hybrid events are going to be prominent moving forward. So it's crucial as event professionals and marketing professionals that we're immersing ourselves in the right technologies and the right planning processes so we can deliver the best hybrid experience as possible. Now, our first hybrid event, as I touched on earlier, was actually back in 2014 for a brand called ACI. So we produced simultaneous launch events, one in London, one in New York, which were live streamed between one another, allowing interactivity between the speakers. And since then, we've produced countless conferences, which, is have, uh, which have had their main stage con content streamed. However, that's, that's very much been what we like to refer to as the first generation of hybrid events. You know, it's very much so a one-way flow of information with limited interactivity. Platforms and technology have come on leaps and bounds since then. You know, the pandemic essentially has accelerated the digital transformation across many industries and none more so than the events industry. So as we look to the second generation of hybrid events, the future is bright and exciting. You know, you're going to have these two audiences who are catered to in a totally different way. You're gonna have a two-way flow of information and high levels of interactivity. It's just important that as planners, we're carefully crafting both of those attendee journeys. So what we've started doing is for you at home, mapping out what those two parallel journeys will look like. So I'll leave that up in case people want to look at what uh, an, the in-person journey may look like in, ter in terms of some of the key touch points, and then what the online attendee journey might look like in terms of some of the key touch points. Now, with these two parallel uh, journeys, there are going to be key touch points where they can interact and engage with one another. And that's why it's very much the second generation of hybrid events. And it's a really, really exciting prospect. Now, what I've done is I've started to break down what the hybrid experience will look like into some key areas. So touching on the overall experience, as we've said, you can't make those two attendee experiences the same. I liken it to a football game, for instance. You know, someone that goes to the stadium their experience is totally different to someone who's viewing it from home, either from TV or their laptop. Now, those two experiences are never going to be the same. But what we can do as event planners and marketers is make both of those attendee journeys as good as possible. We can carefully craft them in such a way that both of them take huge value from the experience. Now, what it does take is more logistical expertise, more technological expertise and more planning than ever before. But with the technology which is readily available, it's going to be a very exciting future. 
if you partner with people with, who have experience in this space. Now, the second area we look at is the general sessions and breakouts. Again, it's crucial that you're investing in things like speaker training, as speakers are going to have to engage with you know, in-person audience and an online audience, which can be tricky. This is, this is a new space for most speakers, not all. So investing in speaker coaching, particularly for internal speakers if you're a big brand, is a very, very valuable tool. Now, also thinking about your session design, that's going to be crucial. And especially we touched on things like Netflix and, and Amazon Prime. So offering multiple camera angles if you are watching uh, as an online attendee is going to be crucial. You don't want it to be a static experience. Otherwise, what you have ultimately is a very disconnected experience where people who are participating online, they don't really feel connected. And that can lead to acrimony and ultimately lead to a more disconnected experience. So it's crucial to think about at every stage, how can you make the online uh, audience feel as involved and make it a participatory experience, an active experience, rather than it just being quite, quite a static experience, essentially, for that online audience. Also, for breakouts, you know, you could have some which are just for online, some which are just for in-person, some which are a mixture of two. There are budgetary considerations, and that's a big part of it. So think about ways that you can connect both online and offline attendees, which leads us nicely onto the next part, which is networking. Now, networking is one of the number one reasons why people attend events. And it's been one of the key areas that platforms have have struggled with is to really facilitate authentic and collaborative online networking opportunities. Now, lots of platforms have invested lots of money in this area, and it's our job to facilitate the networking opportunities between your online audience and your in-person audience at hybrid events. So really think about how you can do that. Will you have networking pods um, at your event, which will allow your in-person attendees to network with online attendees? Will it become part of the event app where they can simply go on whether they're in person and then interact with the online audience? There are all of these key considerations which we've been helping our partners over at Hubelo, Hopin and Goldcast really evolve their platforms to tie these, you know, these key considerations which they've not had to think about in the past, um, how they can evolve the platform to keep audiences engaged. Now, another big area for this to consider is also AI matchmaking. So making sure that the, the networking opportunities are as valuable as possible. Now, I've attended uh, events in the past where I've always been rather dubious uh, about the authenticity of any type of AI matchmaking on the platforms. But lots of businesses are investing lots and lots of money um, into really powering fantastic AI matchmaking solutions for events. And whether that means some pre-event surveys or as part of that pre-event cycle, people answering uh, some questions or preference lists within the app itself. Again, it's all about building that you know, sense of community in the run-up to an event and tying that into your pre-coms. And the more you can do that, then ultimately the more success you'll have out of these events rather than it just being totally sporadic and spontaneous. If you can really craft these experiences for people in a way that is truly valuable, then they will keep coming back year after year and yours will be one of the leading events in the world. Now, just as we've talked about matchmaking for networking opportunities, it's also crucial to ensure that the sponsors are seeing great value from these uh, from the meetings that they're having. Now, in a recent survey by Bisbo, over 72% of sponsors have said that they would be significantly interested in participating in hybrid events. Now, the reason that digital's here to stay is partially because sponsors and brands have realized the huge potential from delivering immersive and engaging digital experiences. You can, get, you can connect with such a broad audience in such an exciting way. So it's crucial really to help sponsors understand the levels of visibility that they can get out of, of hybrid experience, hybrid experiences, because they can have online visibility, offline visibility, and really, again, tying that into your pre-coms and making sure that they understand how to leverage your hybrid experience to drive the most value. 
And at the moment you can do that, again, not only will you have attendees coming back year after year, you have sponsors coming back year after year. Particularly, again, back to the AI matchmaking point, you know, if you can start facilitating and crafting meetings for them based on hot prospects that are ready to meet, uh, really driving the most value for sponsors possible, again, you're going to have a waiting list of people who are keen to sponsor your event. So technology is coming on so, so quickly that it's a really, really exciting prospect. Now, the second area to look at is the ticketing and revenue. So again, we can be very, very clever um, with hybrid because you have these two parallel sets of audiences. Uh, you know, you might have a VIP ticket, which is available purely for online, say where they get a virtual meet and group with some incredible speakers or, you know, some preset meetings. There might be a VIP then for the in-person attendee. And again, and then there can be a standard ticket and you can tier all of these in such a way. But what it does take back to the earlier points is far more planning than ever before. You can really delve into this and the opportunity with hybrid is absolutely huge. But of course, when there's more moving components, then what that does do is open you up to more risks if you're not partnered with people that have, have experience producing hybrid events, that have a lot of experience in the virtual space and have a lot of experience producing in-person events as well. So for people that have experience in all these spaces, it's an absolutely huge opportunity moving forward, which is why we're so excited uh, to see what the future has in store. Uh, we already have a big backlog of hybrid inquiries and the technology's come on so quickly that it's definitely going to be a really exciting 12 to 18 months. And it'd be great to also get back to an in-person component to these events. Now, the other thing that we want to look at, of course, is the accessibility uh, behind the events. And that's part of the reason that virtual, uh, that hybrid events are going to be uh, so popular is this the uh, sustainability aspect and the accessibility aspect as well. You know, I, I think back to the year before last where I was in San Francisco for an event one day I really wished I could have attended an event that same day, which was taking place in Dublin. Now, unfortunately, that just wasn't possible uh, just because of the travel restrictions. So having this digital component to your event really does open up this realm of possibility to be connecting with a wider audience. Now, of course, for us as well, so for EMC3, we're one of the uh, founding members of ILA. So that's a sustainability body which is now making leaps and bounds to make the events industry more sustainable. And I think all the brands that we're working with are trying to do their bit to ensure that you know their output is less. They're trying to be more sustainable. They're trying to be more green. And essentially, if you're not if you're traveling to less events every year, then you are becoming far more sustainable. Or if your events are, are smaller, let's say, with a larger online component, or you're doing less every year then you are far more sustainable. So you know, th there's all of these key reasons as to why people are starting to lean towards you know, keeping some of their events virtual or keeping some hybrid. Now, I've just had someone in my ear say that we're almost running over time. So quickly to uh, wrap up, why go hybrid? So increased reach and attendance, of course, that's great for all brands, but great for sponsors as well. Greater flexibility, so both from uh, an attendee perspective, but also from a planning perspective. So the lead time is slightly shorter for some of the bigger in-person events we used to work on. You know, it'd be a 12 to 18 month planning process, particularly for you know, really large scale conferences. So there is a bit more flexibility for both attendees and planners. A higher level of engagement with your audience. And again, that data is so rich that you can capture and see what sessions they've been in and really help that craft your uh, your planning for future events, more powerful sponsorship opportunities, which we've just touched on, reduced environmental impact, reduced travel costs, both internally and externally, improve return on investment. So it's really, really exciting, as I touched on, the, the potential return on investment for brands which can get this strategy right, you know, from a sense of driving brand awareness, building a community, and ultimately driving sales is absolutely huge. And then 
finally, the valuable data and metrics that you can capture, which as we all know, are great drivers for strategy. So I've tried to wrap that up. Generally what takes 45 minutes in within 30 minutes. Um, I'd love to answer any questions you have about hybrid events, virtual events. Uh, so if you want to take your phone out and scan this QR code, then you'll actually be able to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure and happy to take any questions that anyone has. Josh, fantastic presentation, mate. Um, filled out the time beautifully. Um, we do have a couple of questions and I'm going to fire through them quickly with you. Um, first and foremost, I think we've got about seven or more attendees who've asked if they can get a copy of your presentation. Can they reach out to you on the platform or, or maybe drop you an email yeah, or something like that and on, grab a copy? Yeah, on the platform or connect with me on LinkedIn and I'm always happy to share that and always happy to have a follow-up call. Awesome. We also have one interesting question here. I'm going to read it out. So if clients do not want to work with a production company on site, in your opinion, what kind of equipment would you recommend for a high quality live stream feed while still remaining cost effective? I'm not sure those two are mutually exclusive, but is there anything that kind of jumps to mind for you? Uh, well, I think to be honest, I would always gravitate towards having an experienced partner on site. Um, it, you know, it sort of leans back to what, what we talked about is there are more, more risks associated with not, uh, you know, having people that have experience producing hybrid events, virtual events, and have experience, particularly if it's live streaming, you know, it's, you want to have experienced partners on site. So it might not be the answer that everyone wants, but my recommendation would, if you're producing hybrid events, partner with experienced partners for it, because although the potential return on investment is huge. You know, the risks are also bigger, if, particularly if you're trying to shortchange it. And don't forget, not all events are suitable for hybrid. You know, an incentive trip is not suitable for hybrid, for instance. You know, most awards dinners, unless you have an incredible keynote speaker, it's just it's better off just being in person. So there's all of these things now that everyone's just talking about hybrid because it's a buzzword, which, you know, it'd be great for me to say, yeah, all, all events should be hybrid. But that's not the reality. So again, we, we try to be as authentic and genuine when we're having conversations with people. And it's about only applying hybrid in suitable circumstances. And that all starts with the purpose that I talked about at the beginning. So looking at your goals, your objectives, and if that is to reach a global audience, then fantastic, but let's invest in hybrid. If that means doing less events in one year, then do that, but do it properly because you know, a bad event can always do more damage to a brand than you know doing something mediocre so you know, it might not be the answer that everyone wants but that is yeah that's my advice no mate stick to your stick to your values and um, we can't fault that josh thank you very much for coming and opening day two on the smart stage with me um to all the attendees we'll see you in the next session